so for Dominic, and also uh, for Giovanna, if she wants to reply to that. Um, uh, because both presentations were about how digital can give us more tools to understand the past and uh, media history in a different way that was not possible in the uh, and I was thinking, but um, you have also <coughs> a downside because with digital you have a total separation from the original device and the original technology that uh, will make possible the visualization of the disk, for example, or of colors. So you are losing something, you are losing the technological experience of that device. I was uh, probably you have just starting to watch the disk, you go faster and faster and you have probably some sound related to the device or some other physical experience. Uh, the digitization make you possible to have some effort more similar to the original experience, maybe more, but something is lost in the translation. Okay, very quickly so for concerning the disks, I have not I had not time to show it, but I have my own original devices home. So I, I also uh, work with mirrors and uh, wheels and I have, I made an exhibition, I, I built stroboscopic discs for my own work. I make stroboscopic works by the way. So, uh, in fact, yes, it's, it's not the original uh, art form, it's not the original device. It's why it's so difficult. But, um, the, uh, the, the thing, the, the important point to me is, in fact, I'm doing a, a modern uh, rereading of it, a modern translation. It's a magnification. It never was shown that big, that clear, that crisp, that precisely. So I'm perfectly conscious that it's... But to me, as an animator, it shows, it, 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 it pays tribute to the quality of this animation that was never seen like this. It's a different problem for the silver, uh, the silver films. But for the graphic films, it's a tribute. It's not the same thing. My purpose is not to, uh, although in my exhibitions I have devices so people can turn cranks and, you know, look in mirrors and see the original thing, but also I have big projections, you know, of, of, of the creations. So that's the both sides of the digital. But to me the main, the most important is mostly theoretical. Uh, and practical, it's the digital age of animation makes, uh, and, and the devices uh, makes it possible for uh, a new look on these pre-filmic, but not pre-cinema, devices, okay? So it's, we, we can think again these little loops as worth as artistic work. Look at the numbers of loops on the websites and it, now in the exhibition. So it's just a bringing force, but of course you are right, it's not the original stuff. They still have made the, the audience. Right? If I can add one, one uh, uh, remark on that, uh, actually I don't think it's the digital that is making up lose the original experience of the device. I think that that experience was lost long ago before the digital. So, in a way, the digital forces us to reflect on it uh, and to, and I think what both presentations had in common was how we, we because of the digital, we can uh, um, uh, provide a kind of privileged access to this image that actually was never there, only for the few people working around it, the, the few people who really work with the object. Uh, when the, the, the colors were still fresh and the crisp was there. <laughs> I, I may add, in the 19th century, a lot of art amateurs were only knowing some famous paintings of the great museums by photographies in black and white, you know, and engraving. So the idea of reproducing the original artwork, the thing with cinema is the movement. To, to me, the point is movement, especially in animation. That's the nerve of the thing, you know. So uh, we, we reproduce the movement, you know? 
the, the invention of animated picture is the invention of the possibility to construct visually the movement and to reproduce it exactly. That is why the loop, that is why the film. Uh, so we are in a, a dialectic of uh, production, reproduction, translation, <coughs> migration, migration. 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 Yeah. Migration. <laughs> uh, so it's it, we have to take the whole the, the whole process uh, to have the whole process. And now you can very well make an exhibition with the original piece, one of few original devices, plus the new magnification or miniaturization. You can make a stroboscopic piece for iPhone. I don't know if it <laughs> interests <laughs> any people, but it could be done. You know. Thank you very much for your amazing uh, lecture. We saw the most extraordinary examples of uh, 19th century animations that were ne I never saw them animated before. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work and your research and how do you animate them? Um, well, basically, I'm a filmmaker, uh, a drawer. I like to draw. And so I went into animated film and then into experimental film. And now I am a professor at Paris 8 University and my research uh, have, have always been centered around the, the question of the graphic moving picture. This is what I call cinema graphic and I made a book uh, in French about that, about the history from optical toys to digital cinema. So um, I, I started making my own discs because I, I found it funny. I make with my students also. And then I wanted to see uh, what were the original uh, inventions. And the only one that was well known was the plateau dancer turning around. It was reproduced in some books, so I could copy it, print it, and make my uh, own <coughs> devices. And since we progressed with some uh, other colleagues and some students uh, in the idea of uh, reconstitution of the first uh, first animated picture, because as I said in the lecture, it's a double invention. It's an invention of the pr principle of all animated pictures, the frame by frame, that was taken by uh, silver photographic film, and even now in our digital cameras, it's the same principle, it's frame by frame, in fact. It's an illusion, but it works well. Now we are so accustomed to it that we don't ma mind it, except for the animators that always want to find the little trick that you cannot shoot, that you cannot film. So uh, that's what inter interests me, is what you cannot film, <laughs> what you can produce. So I've been doing this research. We made the first film in 1999. It was just in time uh, in the 20th century, the last year. And uh, now, uh, for almost 10 or 20 years, I don't know, I have several other subjects of research and a lot of work, but I made exploration of various uh, archives in Prague, in Belgium, uh, in Paris, uh, on the internet uh, with collectors. And I tried to, my project is now to make it, the first film we made was in 16 millimeter, frame by frame with a Rostrum camera, the classical animation stand. Uh, we scanned some discs, we printed them, and we turned them very patiently, you know, frame by frame. Uh, with digi now I work, I can do it by myself. With uh, I work with After Effects mainly. Uh, it's a bit tricky, but uh, I like uh, geometry also. You have to find because they have different uh, number of frames. I didn't talk about that. Didn't have time, but you have six frames, four frames, twelve, twenty, thirteen very strange numbers, so each one has to be adapted and to find the right frame rate. I work at 12 frames per second, otherwise it's too, it's too fast, like the old animation, classical animation, 12 mm -hmm. frames per second. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the most complicated is to get good scan of the, of the discs. Mm -hmm. So it's a work like, uh, you know, you have to convince the curators, uh, you have to find where it is. And as I told, it's not only in film and cinema museums. 
it's in science uh, museum, technique museums, uh, because it's considered more than a, a device than a work of art. So that, that's the main point. And you were you were talking about the fact that you're trying to marry theory and practice and get this, the and kind of re yeah. get the experience to be revived yeah. so that it, it it's a modern uh, it's a modern experience but it reproduces the feeling that probably people had at the time and uh, so how how did you get to the to this um, you know to this uh, kind of application of it. Um, excuse me, I don't... Like, how did you get to the idea of uh, what you said today, the magnification, that that uh, was going to be the best way? Uh, well, because uh, if you want to re just uh, reproduce them, you have to use the original devices. That there were many. There were some sophisticated with cranks, but the most simple was just a stick, you know, and you, you hold the stick and you turn the disc. But um, the idea is to transmit it to other people and to explore uh, the quality of animation that is. And this, to me, it's a tribute because the, the first devices were, were okay, but they were very, very fragile. You had to had a lot of light, uh, there was no electric light, they had to put a candle or to go to the window with the sun. And I reconstructed the devices. You, you will see on the website. I, I, I work with a, an engineer. He makes. He, I, I, I um, build machines also, but modern machines for stroboscopy. But the the effect was uh, not as good as the work was. You know, because the, there is little light. It's it's, a, it's kind of gray. You have this shutter in front of the eyes. There is a slight anamorphic effect because it moves all the time. So it, it's not crisp, it's not... So the idea is to make a tribute to... Had, if they had the modern technologies, they would have used it. So, so to, to bring it into a, a more intense experience with the, the contemporary tools. But it's not a um, trahison. Uh, so it's not a... It's not like um, you're not betraying it. No, I'm not betraying them. I'm, I'm just promoting them and showing how clever animators they were. And I've, I've screened my film and my discs in several places, places with animators, and they said uh, they invented almost everything. So it, it's, you know, it's just a matter of uh, justice and history of art, you know. And you can also, when you see the disc, you can see that the, the kinetic art of the 20s and the 60s, you know, uh, it's not to dismiss what have been done by other artists, but it's just to work on the long-term history of art. Uh, uh, every generation thinks he invents the world, but uh, when you get old, you realize that you are in, in the history. And it's, it's stimulating to, to see that people in the 19th century were so modern with the question of movement, you know. And these discs were very popular. The, 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 the publishers, there were dozens, hundreds of uh, reprints, you know. It was very, very popular. We, f we forgot that. It's like with stereoscopic photography. It was very popular. Amazing. And just one last question. How, like... It was done in 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 scientific labs. Like, what's the the link to science that you were you just touched upon it? But I, I thought it was an the incredible. link to science is the origin. Uh, the fact is that the three uh, main uh, creators of stroboscopic discs and the best one were three very uh, clever and famous scientists. So it's interesting as a point of view, and it's it's a case in the history of art and cinema that uh, scientists became a fine kinetic artist, even in Phantasmagoria. There is an explanation for it, of course. They were all working in the, in the study of the eye, the brain, what we perceive. It was typically the, at the beginning of the 19th century, uh, scientists started to be interested in how our nervous system is functioning, you know. And incidentally, they discovered this trick, in fact, uh, that Faraday discovered, and then they adapted it. And then 
they went into something else. They went. Some of them dropped uh, the idea of uh, Plateau made uh, six drawings or nine, and then he went back to his studies. He was working on soap bubbles and uh, the eye and everything. And Purkinier uh, is a pioneer of neurosciences. He, he, he was working on subjective vision. It's very interesting. What you see when you close your eyes, well, the little dots that you see when you look at the skies that are in your eyes and not in the sky and everything. So it, they are fantastic people. You know. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. No, Thank you pleasure. so much. Yeah.